Hey guys, it's Cynthia with Sprinkles and Stuff, and I'm gonna show you guys a cute little way to make cake pops very a little bit different um, with edible images. Um, these are on wafer paper, and um, we do carry them in different images in the store. And we're gonna use a cookie cutter. And one of the most important things that I do do is um, actually weigh my cake pops so they're all even. Um, but um, what you normally would do is, um, for this type of cake pop is, you're using a one and a half inch circle, and your dough is pretty much kind of like um, cookie dough. You would kind of roll it out to a certain thickness as you can see how thick it is. And what you're going to do is take your cookie cutter and you're going to press it right through, just like a cookie. And you're gonna remove that. And of course you can reuse that also again. And then you push it out. And this is another way that I make my birthday cake one. And then you take your stick and you're just going to Press it right through. It's very important that you get your um, the thickness that you want there because if not, um, you won't have a thick enough cake pop. So I usually will first um, grab all my um, dough and make sure that everything is exactly the same so that they're all even and that I have a nice amount. Um, and I like to have my cookie, um, my dough, my cake pop dough. Um, I don't like it really mushy. I still want it to taste like cake. Um, so you can reuse up to the last little scrap. Um, because it'll form really nicely in there. So here it is one more time. And you want it to be nice and thick. Okay, so once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and take your cake pop. I'm going to open up one of these here first. And wafer paper is just um, made out of potato starch and vegetable oil. Um, you can put these on cake pops. You can put these on... Um, Oreos, you can do it on cupcake toppers, whatever you'd like so you can match the theme. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take this and uh, I would normally dip it um, today for the sake of it. I'm gonna do it. Now you don't wanna take all the chocolate off of it. You want to just go ahead and tap it. To remove all the excess on there but if you if you tap too hard um, you're gonna start seeing the little edges and then you just give it a few seconds you make sure that everything's kind of just shaping the way it should be and you're just gonna place that right on top there okay and if you don't want to put any sprinkles on there you don't have to I'm a big fan of sprinkles and sugar crystals on my items so what I do is I'm taking some of our sugar crystals which are my favorite to use and you have to make sure that this isn't if you can see how wet it is still there you have to make sure that it kind of is setting a little bit because if not um, your sugar crystals will be too heavy to actually place on there you'll, you'll start seeing them slide off and pulling down your actual um, uh, chocolate on there so um, for the sake of time I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how pretty this looks and how easy it is and you, how you don't have to roll and roll and roll and roll. I opened it the wrong side, but you're just going to take it and make sure you get the top there. And you probably want to use a bigger bowl. And you're just going to, and I kind of want to show you how it's pulling it right here. When you see them sink in like this, that means that it's the chocolate wasn't set completely. And one of the biggest things that I know, and you can see it right there, it fell on there. Um, and you just press it down with the bottom down like that. And then after a few minutes, you can go ahead and add a cute little bow um, on there, or you can just leave it as is, tie a nice little bag on there with a nice little ribbon. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for our next one. Comment and let us know what you guys would like uh, for our next one. And you can find us at www.sprinklesandstuff.com. Thank you.